Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to test, well, we have the Kodak Smile printer here, but we're going to test more than that. We're going to test Kodak Zinc, Canon Zinc, Polaroid Zinc, Life Print Zinc, and Hewlett Packard Zinc. We're going to test all of these five different zinc papers to see if they perform the best. So what I've done is I have picked out, there's, there's 20 photos in each, of, or 20 sheets in each of these four and 100 in these ones, but they come in packs of 10, 2, 2, 2, 2, 10. So what I've done is I've picked 10 photos that were not taken with uh, Kodak Printomatic type or Polaroid cameras. They were taken with high-end cameras. I downsampled all of the photos to 4,500 by 3,000, same aspect ratio, so that uh, they would match the size of the photos from my Kodak Printomatic. All of them are 300 DPI photos. And what I did was I picked them out to look at different aspects of what this printer can or cannot do. So I have... Here's the, here are the 10 photos that we're going to use. They look at color, contrast, detail, accuracy, etc. This first one is a cow. It's going to test how well this printer does black and white. The second one, this butterfly, will look at cool tones. Here, this guy, the horse, the horse trainer and the horse, will test the blacks in the dark setting. This Mustang in front, in front of the Milky Way will test fine detail. Here we have one of a tractor in front of some mountains that's going to test muted tones. Here's a dog that's going to test how well they do for pets and specifically details like fur and things like that and how natural pets look with them. Next one, this one of dad and baby are going to test skin tones under artificial light. This one here, this next one of Just Baby, is going to test skin tones in natural light. Here we have a sunset photo, and here we have a warm tones photo. So I picked these 10 out specifically to test different things. We're going to get this guy connected to power because the um, battery rating on it is not 50 sheets. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it said it was good for 30, 30 to 40 sheets in the manual. So we're going to hope that plugging it into the wall gives us enough power to use this the entire time. And we can tell it's on. You might not be able to see there's lights here, but when it lights up, it's on. It's blinking. So I'm going to open up the uh, Smile app on my phone. Oh, happy Halloween. There's new stickers. Okay, great. So I've got the Smile app. I'm going to hit Connect. Yes, no, I... Why does it need to know where we are? Android requires location permissions to use in-app Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, I guess... Okay. I guess I'll allow it to know where I'm at. Smile knows exactly where I'm going to be printing these photos from. That's heartwarming. Okay, so next we get this screen. We're going to click connect. And I'm going to let this thing connect. Pair with Kodak Smile. Yes. Okay. Updating the firmware. Oh, this is going to take a while. Well, while that updates, let's open up these packs of zinc paper. Now, one thing about these is that when you open up your film pack, going to notice that they come with this color calibration sheet here. On my Kodak Printomatic, I've tried using other brands of paper, but I have to use the Kodak calibration sheet. I don't know why. I've even tried um, hacking the uh, system by photocopying the color calibration sheets in different colors just to see if how much the color calibration sheet actually calibrates print color. But um, no luck so far in getting that to work. That's the Canon. Polaroid. Life print. Now 
The reason I'm doing this test is, oh, that comes with 30 sheets, is because the cost of the, of the different um, sheets varies fairly wildly. Um, and if they all work the same and produce the same quality of print, there we go, HP, then uh, an easy way to save yourself some money if you like using the zinc cameras and printers as I do very much, is to use a different make of zinc paper. So my theory is that all of these prints will be the same. My theory is that it's all the same paper, just with different badges on it. But I'm open to the poss but I'm open to the possibility that I'm wrong, that the papers are actually different, and that the print quality will be different between the papers. All right, everybody. So the prints from the little Kodak printer have finished. Let's. I'm gonna grab them from the... So I had to move the Kodak printer off the table and um, set it over underneath the window because it was overheating so much that it kept, um, kept shutting down or um, having other issues. So, I mean, to be fair, I was really, really using the heck out of it. <laughs> but... Um, all right, here are the life prints samples. Okay, so here is the first set of photos. We have the life print, Kodak, Polaroid, Canon, and HP Kodaks in the middle because that's kind of the baseline since we're using the Kodak printer. Life print has a very strong green cast. Polaroid has a strong magenta cast. Canon seems to have slightly richer tones and better contrast. Like in the tongue here, you can actually make out some detail in the tongue. Cannot do that with the Kodak or the uh, HP paper over here. Um, other than that, these three prints look fairly similar. That is, I mean, right off the bat, first result, I am incredibly surprised by that. I really thought we were just going to go through 10 identical photos, and I was going to say, wow, this was a waste of my money. All right, next up is the black and white photo. Oh, interesting. And what we saw previously has continued. Green cast, magenta cast, slight magenta cast. This, almost, this, look, this is the truest of the black and whites right here has a very slight cool cast to it, but it's that's the black and white print I would pick. I think that's the best of them by a long shot. This almost looks like it wants to have a really low grade sepia tone to it. Wow, that is, that is a staggering result, I won't lie. Okay, and again, we're seeing Huge differences here. Again, Polaroid is a very pink cast, magenta cast here, and Life Print is a really green cast. These are pretty normal, but the um, HP appears a little bit sharper, has better detail in the fur here. But the Canon one, the paper from the Canon is really fantastic here. This is the best of the prints by far. So, so far, Canon is three for three. The Kodak and the HP are, you know, comparable prints almost across the board in these two. Life print is un unappetizingly green so far. So in the muted tone landscape, which is a red tractor in front of some mountains, the Canon has what appears to have the crispest details and the best contrast. Like the mountains here are nice and sharp. Mountains are pretty blurry here in the Kodak and um, 
a little bit soft here in the HP. Again, we have a strong green cast here with the life print and strong magenta on the Polaroid. And once again, the Canon images um, are the most to my liking. That's much different. Now in the digital image, you can make out how red the tractor is. None of them captured that. Uh, they are losing a lot of shadow detail and reds, at least in the images we've seen so far, appear to be a little bit of a struggle for them in general. So the butterfly shot, which was done to highlight cool tones, this is the first one where I don't like the Canon the most. The Canon has some print artifacts that look like digital artifacts in here. The, HP, uh, the Kodak, rather, has turned out the best, I think, with the Polaroid having a slight magenta cast but being a close second. The uh, life print here it has the green cast again, and that has really robbed it of some details. It does have some nice blue tones in here, but the looks like the digital art, looks like digital artifacts here as well as in the HP. Those would be my least favorite, and uh, I would have to say that the Kodak followed by the Polaroid are my favorite for that one. Okay, so here we're going to take a look at the sunset photos, and um, another interesting result here: the the HP. You can see the mountains, the definition of the mountains very well, also with the the Polaroid. Because the Polaroid has a general magenta cast, it complements the sunset fairly well. The HP has, I'm sorry, the Kodak rather, has the most true-to-life colors based on comparing it to the digital file. So the Kodak's my favorite in this set. That green cast on the life print is unappealing there. And these two have some weird banding going on on the sides of them that I'm not sure why that is, but the, the Canon shots very, the Canon print is a very close second favorite to me after the Kodak. So here we have, oops, those are out of order. Here we have a dark setting where we have a horse trainer training his horse. Uh, the prints are pretty close. Again, we got a strong green cast on the horse, which should not be green, and the soil. Bit of a magenta cast, it's not that noticeable here. The Canon has the sharpest detail in the horse's tail, followed closely by the HP. The, the Kodak has some softness and blurriness here in the horse's tail. The Canon print is definitely the best. The HP is a close second. Okay, so this is the Mustang in front of the Milky Way at night. And again, magenta cast and green cast closest in tone, except down here, the red's a bit muted. On the Canon print, paper print, the red is closer to what it looks like in the actual digital file. These two, the HP and the, the Kodak, again, look basically the same. Um, they all show the ba basically the same amount of detail. They have a couple of bright stars. You can kind of make out the gases of the Milky Way here. Not really. Um, Canon's the best print with the Kodak and the HP again being tied for second. So here is our print that is under artificial lighting. And the Canon is the sharpest in the hair detail, followed very closely by the HP paper here. And the Kodak is um, a little bit soft in, um, in the hair detail. Two magenta, two green again. Color-wise, I think they're all pretty much the same. I have a very slight preference for the HP, I think, is the best print of this one because there's a little, it's hard to, it's probably gonna be hard to see on the video, but there's a little bit more detail in the shadows of the, the dark spaces in the eyes here. And, um, but on the Kodak here, the highlights in the, the, the father's face are a little bit less blown out. But again, there's better detail and better contrast over here. So that is, that is a perplexing result, I won't lie. All right, last, last sample. This is the baby under natural light. That is a terrible result. That should, that looks like a goblin baby. It's so green. Um, it's super green, and because of that, it's changed the entire hint, 
tint of her face. It looks like she's got a purple forehead with green sides on her skulls. That's just not a good look. Here, uh, the Kodak is performing as it has throughout pretty well. Highlights in the eyes, general so a little bit of softness in the hair up here, but a good skin tone. Way too pink, really bringing out the blood vessels in her forehead unpleasantly. The HP and the Kodak performed pretty similarly, and I am not a huge fan of it. The um, printing here has brought out some of the blood vessels in her forehead as well, and it's a little bit too sharp in the face to my eye. So I think the Kodak is the best of these. So interestingly, I think the Kodak paper is the best for portraits, and then the, the Canon paper is the best overall performer. That's what I would have to say. Life print, I will never buy again. Polaroid, I will never buy again. HP would be a good option because it's a budget paper compared to these, so I believe the HP is the cheapest. So here are the prices per, per sheet in the, um, of each of the life print, Kodak, Polaroid, HP, and Canon papers. So of these, the life print and the Polaroid, really, I, I could not justify buying again. The HP and the Canon and the Kodak rather perform well enough. I'd consider them to be interchangeable performers. And the Canon is really good for um, basically everything but portraits. I think the Canon paper really surprised me at how well that performs. So if this video was helpful, please leave me a thumbs up and let, let lets me know that I'm producing content which is useful and helpful and interesting to you. If you have any suggestions or ideas or thoughts or if you were as surprised as I was because I really expected these all to be exactly the same. If you were as surprised as I was that they were not, um, please let me know. Especially since I used the same calibration sheet, like I'm really stunned that they did not color calibrate the exact, you know, that they, it's, it's anyway. Um, if you'd like to learn, if you'd like to subscribe and have your notifications on, you'll find out when I have more videos like this in the future. And one last thing, thank you everyone for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video series.